Hi there, thanks for joining. Did you know that most colors in real life are quite muted, that they aren't that vivid as we think? And although the total picture of the photograph looks very colorful, you see that the colors in fact are relatively dull. So when you want to paint uh, more or less realistically, it's very useful to know how you can dull colors down, how you can mute them. You see this red is very very vivid. One thing you can do to make a color duller is add white to it. If you add white the color gets less saturated. For instance when I add yellow to this red it also gets lighter but it doesn't get less saturated. The saturation is still very high because these are two primary colors mixed together and whenever you mix two primaries you get vivid secondary colors. Another way to dull your color is by adding black to it. So if I add a tiny amount of black to my red this also is a less saturated red but it also has become darker so I'll get to that in an instant. Then the third thing you could do is add gray. So I'll show you. You can make gray with white and black of course. You can also make grays in other ways. But first let me show you this. I mix black and white and I try to match the tonal value of this red color. So and with tonal value again we mean how dark or light the color is. So if I compare this to this, this is too light. So I add more black. That's close enough. And if I add this gray color to my red, then you see it hardly affects the tonal value, but it does affect the saturation of the color. Again, we get a less saturated color. By the way, less saturated colors are beautiful. They have some mysterious feel to it. Here you see a collection of muted colors together. It's beautiful. And here you see an example of a collection of very vivid colors. See they're all crying for attention and uh, all kinds of stuff. These muted colors always have some mysterious feeling about it. And a very very beautiful colors. So I'll, uh, this is great as well. Now I'll show you the third method and that's a beautiful method. That's using a a complementary color to dull the color down. Complementary colors lie opposite of each other at the color wheel and if you put them next to each other they pop off your canvas that gives a very big contrast and if you mix them they dull each other down and if you do it in exactly the right balance you end up with a gray color. That's very funny. Now in the case of red when we look at the opposite side of the color wheel we see something like cyan. And you already see that if you uh, put them together, look at that contrast. It's very, very big contrast. In this case, cyan is a primary color. It contains only cyan. A red color always contains magenta and yellow. So this contains two primaries. So whenever you mix three primaries, you get a duller color. So if you don't have the exact complementary color, for instance, if you want to dull down this red, you can use something as long as it contains a little bit of blue. Because then already it works. But with the exact complementary color, if you mix those, then you get a gray color. But I'll show you. So I add a little bit of um, cyan to this red mixture over here. You see? And it has a little bit of the same effect as with the black. So we see the color is dulled down. And I can also, if I add white, I can check how gray it is, you see? So I see, ah, it's a little bit towards the purple side, so it also needed a little touch of yellow. And if I do that, and some slightly more cyan, it gets very gray. It is almost as gray as my palette, you see? And I can add some, some more white, that you can maybe see even better. But you see, you don't have to add that white, but I just wanted to show you that if you use the exact complementary color, then you can get a neutral gray. But most of the times you don't need to dull it down that much. Eh, for instance, if I want to dull it down slightly, then I just need a slight amount of cyan in this case. Then I get a less vivid red. And especially when I also add a, a tiny amount of 
white you see you get a nice desaturated red so here in this case if you remember i added only white so it got muted but this way i'm muting it even more because i also i added white but i also added a complementary color you see this has more of a gray feeling to it even more than this one that's very nice isn't it so let me show you one final example because I still have a lot of paint on my palette and why not? So this green color that is a secondary color because it contains cyan and it contains yellow, two primaries. And there's one primary missing and that is magenta. So if I want to be a little bit precise, I take a little bit of magenta on my palette and I'm gonna mix that through my mixture and again this is a very high contrast eh, between those two colors because they're complementary but if I mix them I get a very gray color again my green gets dulled down and it almost gets gray again see so if I add more magenta in the end I will get to a gray color now it could be, now it's leaning a little bit towards brown, so that means the balance in my mixture somewhere uh, isn't quite right. Because if I have the exact complementary color, then it would become grey. So I add slightly more of the, of the cyan, of the phthalo blue in this case. But I have to be very careful because phthalo blue, there you see, is a very strong pigment. But uh, let me add more of the magenta again and there you see now it gets gray so my green mixture in this case lacked a little bit of cyan so this is a little bit more of a yellowish green but that's no problem if this is more of a yellowish green that automatically means that on the color wheel uh, you shift a little bit uh, from magenta a little bit more towards the purple side so magenta with a little bit more of cyan in it you don't have to be that precise. Eh? If you want to dull down this green color and you don't have magenta, for instance, because it's a color you don't like, you never know, then you can, of course, try to add a little bit of red. And in the end, if you add a little bit of red, the color gets dull as well. This also works. It isn't that ext as extreme as this, of course, but it's good enough. So I'm from the Netherlands and, well, uh, let's take a cliche and take a windmill picture, for instance. I've taken some colors out of this picture. Example, um, this blue is from the sky. This is from a cloud that's very gray. This is from over here. This color is uh, green from the grass. This is a lighter green from the grass. If you see all these colors, they aren't that vivid. And so if I compare the green with, uh, with a green that I buy in the shop, it's way too green. The blue, for instance, you see, it's a totally different color. So these colors are from this picture and I'm gonna try to match them as good as I can. We look at three things when we want to match colors and that is the color itself, which you is it, huh? when you compare it to the color wheel. How light or dark is it? So that we call the tonal value. And another thing is how vivid the color is, how saturated. But, but you cannot see one without the other. They are all connected to each other. So if I look at this color, for instance, the first one, eh, I can see two things straight away. It isn't quite saturated because if you compare it with all these colors, this looks very dull, very muted. It is uh, almost gray. And the second thing I immediately notice is that it is a sort of a middle tonal value. And what I mean by that is it isn't black, it isn't white, it is somewhere in the middle of all these tonal values. You see this goes from dark to, to light, dark, light, and it's somewhere around this value. So we know it's a kind of a middle value and it is almost gray. So if I want to make a gray, one of my favorite uh, ways to do that is uh, mixing ultramarine with burnt umber. And when you mix ultramarine and burnt umber, you get a very dark color that's close to, to black. And of course, when you add white, it will get gray. And the fun part is, and that's very handy in this case, when I add white, you can easily let the, this gray color uh, shift towards a more warm gray or a more cool gray. A cooler gray contains more blue, a warmer gray contains more of the 
burnt umber, it's more brown, that feels warmer. And of course you can also make a neutral grey when you mix them in a, a certain kind of uh, balance. But now let's take a look. I've mixed this color, I put it on the back side of my palette knife and when I compare I can clearly see that my value is way too dark. So you have these three things, color, yeah, the hue, the tonal value and the saturation. And these three things always work together. When I adjust the tonal value, it also mutes the color more. So let's take a look. I want to add more white to make it lighter. Of course, yellow is also a color uh, that you can use to make colors lighter. But in this case, this wouldn't work because then it would get a little bit towards green. So I add a little bit of white. Oops, that's a little bit too much, I think. So I put it over there. Always be careful. So I mix. Mix, 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 and I compare, ah, the tonal value is quite right. But now I see that something is lacking. And that's always very funny. When you uh, have a gray color, you can easily see what's lacking. And now I can see that, my, that uh, it lacks a little bit of blue. So I add a tiny bit of ultramarine again, not too much. Try to build it slowly. The color is now is quite right, but now it's a little bit too dark again, so I take a little bit of my white that was over here so and make it slightly lighter again. So this uh, in fact is um, a more a cooler kind of color. Now we go over to the second color. I think most people would instantly say this is blue. So we've established it is a blue color and also it is a very dark blue color. It's darker than this one and there's another thing. How muted is it? Hmm, it looks pretty vivid. It is not as gray as this, of course, and well, it, it looks quite saturated. But uh, of course, we just have to try. But now, what kind of blue is this? That's a very important color, because we all know a blue can be neutral, like cyan. It also can lean a little bit already towards magenta, so that it has more of a purple look to it like ultramarine. The other way, blue can also lean a little bit more towards green. And if I compare with the color wheel, I think it's fairly neutral, but we'll see. And so for that, and I'll show you, if I would use ultramarine, maybe I would get a hard time getting there, because ultramarine, if I make it lighter, you see, it is a little bit of that purplish, it has a little bit of that purplish tone, uh, color to it, see? So it's, it's a little bit different than what I have here. And that's why I've added phthalo blue to my palette. Because phthalo blue is a relatively neutral blue. So if I compare this, you see it's way too dark. Then I can say, okay, let me add some white again. So be careful, not too much. You see, now it gets lighter and now it gets easier to compare because if the tonal value is closer to the reference color, then it gets easier to judge if we're on the right track. And look at that. This isn't that bad, is it? So, so I clean my palette knife again and, I, and it was a little bit too dark still, so I add some more blue, uh, titanium white to make it slightly lighter. But you see that blue color that I have here now is very, very bright. It's very vivid. And if I compare it with this one, it is, it is, the tonal value is almost good, but you see it is a little bit too vivid. Now, one of the ways to destroy the saturation, we have seen it already, is to add white. We already did that, so it became lighter, but also less saturated already than this one. Another thing you can do is add gray. Uh, another thing you can do, do is add black. Another thing you can do is add the complementary color. And the complementary color of this kind of blue is red. So if I take a little bit of this red, and a little bit of yellow, not too much, just be careful. Something like this, maybe. It might be that I can destroy a little bit of the vividness, but I will 
try it first over here. You see, maybe I've added a little bit too much yellow. Huh? This, this, this orange is a little bit already too much to the yellow side, so now it becomes too green. Can you see? So, that's the way I test it out. So, if I just add red, what will happen then? We'll see, we'll try. It becomes less vivid instantly. It also becomes a little bit more dark, but that's no problem. We can solve that. So again, I go over here and you see it's still way too dark. Then I add slightly more white. And you see it is more, it has more of a gray feeling to it than this. And now if we go over here, you see we are there. So I'll add it over here. Now let's head over to this one. What kind of color is that? Uh, it's a light color. We see that instantly. It's, it's not that dark huh? as you compare with the scale, with the value finder. It's somewhere around here. Um, what kind of color is it? I don't know. But is it green? No, I don't think so. Is it yellow? Hmm, not quite. Is it a sort of an orange? Could be. Could be. Red? Maybe. I don't know. But it's difficult to see, but I don't think it is purple and I don't think it is blue as well. So it is all somewhere over here, I think. Orange to red. And the, the nice thing is, if you have a bit uh, of knowledge of colors, uh, we have a burnt umber here. And burnt umber is a sort of a dark orangey, orangey color. I'll show you if I add a little bit of white. Then you see what happens. It gets light, of course. And, but you see, we can already tell hmm, it has something to do with this color. I can get there very quickly with just using white and burnt umber. And of course, another way to do the same thing could be using yellow and red, pyro red in this case. So, a matter of finding the right balance. You see, and then I add white and we get to sort of the same sort of the same color but then you also need a little bit of blue already to tone it down a little bit see then you can get to the same sort of color not quite there yet but you see it, it it's a bit of the same feeling i hope that makes sense but that's just when you learn to paint with ultramarine and with burnt umber, then you get to know these colors and you know that in advance. So then you have a shortcut. Oops, 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 oops. oops. So let's take this color to work with. Ah, it's still a little bit too uh, dark so it can use a little bit more light but it also if i see it like this it is a little bit too vivid so uh, i can add a little touch of ultramarine just a little touch of blue to dull it down again a little bit so just what i did here as well and maybe we're getting there but i think it also needs a little bit of yellow but we'll have to look so yeah we're getting close but I want to add a tiny bit of yellow as well, because when I compared, I can see that it lacks something. And that something was yellow in this case. But it gets instantly gets more vivid, of course, again, because I add more color to the mixture. And it's still a little bit too dark. So I also add a little bit of white. That's the idea. Now let's take a green, for example. And we know blue and yellow make green. And if you want to mix a vivid green, then you could use phthalo blue and yellow. Then you get a very, very bright green. I'll show you. Because phthalo uh, blue doesn't contain nothing of a sort of red eh? or magenta, better said. And if I add more yellow, you get a lighter green that's also very, very saturated. Because the only thing this color contains is primary yellow and a primary blue. Ultramarine, for, is for instance, it looks similar a little bit to phthalos this way in its dark form. But when you add yellow to that, you will clearly see that you get a very dull green. Because that ultramarine blue, when you look at the color wheel, it already contains, theoretically speaking, it contains magenta. So, my mixture this time consists already of three primaries. It has primary yellow and it has ultramarine and ultramarine consists of 
blue and magenta. So that's why this is more of a dull color. And why do I show that? Because this color, for instance, has more of a dull feeling to it. Eh? It isn't as bright as this. And if I want to make this less bright, I have to add red to get the same result. Because red is the complementary color of green. As a sort of... So if I add that, that to this mixture, I've added a little bit too much red now. But then you see that the color gets duller. When I get ultramarine and yellow, I already have a duller color. So this way I can more easily get to this color, I think. But when I compare this one to this, I can clearly see it's a little bit too dark and it also is a little bit too yellow. It, does, it needs a little bit more of blue. So I've added a little extra paint because I couldn't show it the right way. But look at this. I've added a little bit too much yellow, but then I come very close to this color already. So I'll keep this for here. And uh, what is it lacking? A little bit of white, I think. So I add a little bit of white because then again it gets duller as well. But also slightly lighter and it doesn't need more yellow. Are we there? Well, it's quite right. There we go. But now we wanted that darker version. And we started off like this. And that's way too yellow if you compare it with this color. You see, that's, that's more yellow and this is more blue. Because a green can lean more towards yellow or more towards blue. So I add a little bit of blue. Here we go. Now it's more of a bluish green, but it is too dark, see? So I'll add more white. It's the balancing act. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't cover that well, but here you can see it's quite the same. Oh, and this one as well. As you see this, this is a kind of a gray color. It has a little bit of a brown feel to it. And I think we can get there as well by mixing ultramarine to make a kind of a green color. It's just a matter of trying. And now this green, this is a way too vivid color. It, it has nothing to do with this. But if I add red, I think we might get there. Now I add a little bit of white. It's a little bit too much, but here again you see there's the red. Yeah, we're getting close. It lacks a little bit of yellow, a very tiny amount of yellow again. So in the end, all these dull colors contain three primaries. This one has some similarities with this one that we did. You see as well, by the way, acrylics dry darker than what you see on your palette. That's always uh, the case. They have a color shift. Un unless you paint with very expensive acrylics that don't have color shift. But I wanted to show this color has something to do with burnt umber as well. So I can add white to the burnt umber again. We are instantly very close, but it's a little bit too vivid. So I'll add a little bit of ultramarine as well. Maybe we're there already, I think. Yeah, see, that's quite good enough for this fellow. OK, uh, then this one is obviously very gray and we already did a gray at uh, the start of the video. So again, I grab some ultramarine and I grab some burnt umber and try to make yeah, a balanced mix. Now it's a little bit towards the blue side, if you see. So yeah, it's a little bit too, um, too, too much blue. So I add more burnt umber. Gets a little bit warmer, my gray. And I compare again. And now it's a little bit too dark. So I'll add a little bit of white. And now it could be that it lacks still lacks another color as well. And I think it lacks a little bit of red. So here I have a tiny bit of red. So you see, that's very funny. If you mix a gray a little bit towards the, the right tonal value, then it gets easier to see what is lacking. So now I added a slight amount of white again as well. So you see, this is good for this color. A little bit too dark still. But that's uh, how you go about it. Of course, you can be a little bit more precise than I just did. But you get the idea, I think. <laughs> no, I hope that was helpful. See you next time.